Hey everybody, my name is Tyler and today we're going to discuss asset allocation. If your investment portfolio is improperly balanced, meaning you're too heavily invested in a specific asset class, you'll be more exposed to market risk. This means in the event of price swings or recessions, you're likely to get lower returns than an investor who is more diversified. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the most popular asset allocation strategies outlined by financial experts. I'm going to break down these strategies so that we can understand the argument for each investment approach. Then I'm going to show you how I've used these strategies to build and balance my own portfolio based on my risk tolerance. So if you're a beginner or someone who's just looking to round out their investment portfolio, don't go anywhere because this information might just save you from making some very costly investing mistakes. First, let me give you guys some context on asset allocation. Although it sounds complicated, it's actually a very simple principle. Asset allocation refers to the portion of your portfolio that you designate to a specific asset class. The purpose of adopting and sticking to an asset allocation strategy is to maintain a diversified portfolio. In the end, asset allocation is really about balancing risk so that your investment portfolio will perform consistently year after year. Ideally, a good asset allocation strategy will give you positive returns even during economic crises or recessions. I think that now is a great time to reconsider asset allocation because of the unique market changes we've seen throughout the coronavirus pandemic. It's shown that there are some wildly unpredictable events that can totally change the economic landscape. And the best way to survive these events and continue seeing positive growth in your investments is to keep a diversified portfolio. So what are we talking about when I say asset classes? Well, for most people, stocks and bonds are the two main asset classes included in their asset allocation strategy. Stocks are the ideal asset class for long-term investors. Stocks are known to be more volatile in the short term, but over long periods of time, they average an annual return of about 10%. So for younger investors or those more comfortable with risk, allocating a big portion of your portfolio to stocks is a popular strategy. Bonds, on the other hand, have an average annual return of just 5%. Bonds are traditionally more of a stable investment, ideal for short-term investors looking for a safe investment strategy. People who are closer to retirement typically have a larger portion invested into bonds in order to reduce the risk of their portfolio losing value when they retire and need access to it the most. And while stocks and bonds will make up the bulk of your portfolio, I also want to mention a few other asset classes that I think deserve a spot in your portfolio. One of these assets is commodities. Commodities are things like food or other raw materials that are used to make other products. Some of the most common commodities are oil and gold. When investing in commodities, you're investing in the price and demand for that commodity, which can grow even if publicly traded businesses and their stocks are experiencing downtrends. You can invest by buying these materials directly, but it's easier to invest by just purchasing ETFs or stocks that deal directly with your desired commodities. Another asset is real estate. Since real estate has such a high barrier to entry, the most practical way to invest is with real estate investment trusts, also called REITs. I'm personally a big fan of REITs because it makes investing in real estate so accessible and they offer some very impressive dividends. REITs and real estate in general have historically performed very well against inflation and can help balance out the volatility of corporate stocks. If you want to learn more about how to best invest in REITs, be sure to check out my video on REITs and Roth IRAs. The final asset I want to include is cryptocurrency. Love it or hate it, cryptocurrency has produced incredible returns over the past few years. Yes, it might be the absolute most volatile investment you can make, but I personally think it still has the ability to make a lot of people a lot of money. Cryptocurrency isn't included in the asset allocation methods we're about to look at, but I'm going to revisit this a little bit later to discuss how it can be included among your traditional investments. So now that we've covered the type of assets we're dealing with, let's take a look at some of the most popular asset allocation methods. There are two asset allocation approaches I'd like to discuss. The first is the all weather or all season portfolio created by hedge fund manager Ray Dalio. This strategy is designed to be successful through any type of economic environment. The theory here is that there are four things that can happen in a market. Inflation, deflation, higher than expected growth, or lower than expected growth. The all weather portfolio is split among asset classes that perform well in each of those environments. The portfolio is made up of 30% stocks, 40% long-term bonds, 15% intermediate term bonds, 7.5% gold, and 7.5% other commodities. In the last 10 years, this portfolio has given an average annual return of 8.1%. That's certainly not bad, especially considering any time that the portfolio has posted negative returns, they've still been much less than the negative returns of a given asset class. And the reasoning behind this is that the investment is evenly distributed among very different asset classes. If one underperforms, the rest of the portfolio will help cushion the blow and hopefully keep your returns in the green. The first thing that surprises me about this portfolio is that it's only 30% stocks. Considering stocks perform so much better than bonds over the long term, I wouldn't want to make the trade-off of putting so much of my portfolio into bonds. But I'm also more comfortable with risk at my age, so I can see how this is more attractive for older investors or anyone with lower risk tolerance. 
The other thing that I find interesting is that the portfolio still delivers an average return that is greater than the average returns of bonds. Even though bonds make up over 50% of the allocation, the portfolio as a whole outperforms annual bond returns. At first, I thought this might be because of gold and other commodities. But while commodities can be a good hedge against inflation, further research showed that the annualized return of commodity indexes over the last 10 years has been negative. Overall, I think this portfolio shows the power of corporate stock investments, as they've produced most of the returns on this portfolio with only 30% of the total investment. It also shows how diversification can protect you from losses in other areas. If you're interested in replicating this portfolio, you can do so with five easy fund investments. You can, of course, pick your own stocks or funds, but in the spirit of diversification, it's easier, cheaper, and often more effective to just use low-cost ETFs and index funds. The second asset allocation I'd like to discuss is a portfolio based on your risk tolerance and your investment timeline. By investment timeline, I mean when you expect to cash out on your investments and begin spending your savings. As I touched on earlier, younger investors have a higher risk tolerance and a longer investment timeline. People our age are likely investing for 20 plus years in the future. This means that a few bad years in terms of annual returns will probably not affect your portfolio very significantly. As a result, we're able to pick riskier investments, which typically translates to a higher allocation into stocks. Conversely, older investors are closer to retirement. These investors have a lower risk tolerance because they're going to use their investment savings to fund their lifestyle after they retire. Significant allocation into the stock market can be dangerous for them because there's always the chance of the market crashing and destroying their portfolio value when they need it the most. So older investors will opt for a higher allocation into bonds, taking a lower return in exchange for stability and safety. Common allocations for this approach range from 80% stocks and 20% bonds for younger and risk tolerant investors to as little as 20% stocks and 80% bonds for older investors seeking a stable portfolio. Generally, experts recommend slowly transitioning your portfolio to be more weighted into bonds over time. John Bogle, the creator of the index fund and a respected financial expert, suggests using a simple formula for your stock and bond allocation. He says that you should subtract your age from 100 to get your target stock allocation. In my case, that means 76% stocks. The remaining 24% would be allocated to bonds. I think this is a nice, simple way to figure out a rough estimate of what you should be considering for your stock and bond portfolio allocation. Ideally, you'll diversify these investments into index funds and bond funds to secure as much stability as you can. If you want to learn more about Bogle and this strategy, check out the summary I did of his book and investing in index funds. But as I'm sure you've noticed, this portfolio doesn't give any weight specifically to real estate, cryptocurrency, gold, or other commodities. Since all of these assets have qualities that I like, I think I can create an even better portfolio by using these strategies as a guideline to create a well-balanced portfolio. Now, before I get into my personal asset allocation, I wanna say that first, I don't mind risk in my investments, so this is by no means going to be a risk-free portfolio. And second, I'm not a financial professional. I'm just a guy who did some research on the internet and decided to invest a certain way. So please consider doing some more research before you make any investment decisions. I'm going to compare my personal portfolio allocation with the approximate asset allocation of 75% stocks and 25% bonds that I got using Bogle's suggested allocation. So I'm going to show you how I added REITs, commodities, and cryptocurrency into this portfolio one by one. First, I'm lowering my bond allocation to just 10%. Again, I don't mind the risks of doing this, and if stocks are going to keep performing better than bonds, then bonds are gonna be the first thing to go. This 10% is primarily made up of my emergency fund, which I know isn't necessarily a long-term investment, but that's just how I'm choosing to get started with it. I'm fully in on mutual bond funds with this investment, because any interest I earn will be completely tax-free. This is something that I discussed in detail in a previous video if you'd like to learn more about it. To replace bonds, I'm adding 5% into commodities, which will categorically include gold. Everything I've read says to allocate no more than 5 to 10% into commodities. Since they've been performing quite badly in recent years, I'm going to stick with a lower limit of 5%. This is going to be in the form of the Aberdeen Standard Commodity ETF, ticker symbol BCI, simply because it has the lowest fees of any commodity fund I had access to. I'm allocating 10% of my portfolio to cryptocurrency because this is the maximum percentage recommended by most financial experts. Truth be told, my cryptocurrency investments actually make up around half of my portfolio right now. And that's just because I was investing in cryptocurrency long before I started getting interested in the stock market. So this means I'm gonna hold off on any additional cryptocurrency investments until I get further along with my other investments. I'm also really holding out hope for a cryptocurrency index fund to become available because I will be jumping on that the first chance I get. I'm allocating about 25% of my portfolio to REITs or real estate trusts. This is because I think real estate is a phenomenal long-term investment and the dividends paid out by REITs are much higher than other stocks. But again, before you invest in REITs, check out my previous video because you will make so much more money investing in REITs through a Roth IRA. I personally invest in all of my REITs exclusively through my Roth IRA account. 
and the remaining 50% of my portfolio is going to be a mix of large cap stocks and index funds. I've selected a handful of large cap stocks that make up about 10% of my overall portfolio, with the remaining 40% being completely allocated into low cost index funds. So that's how I'm approaching asset allocation based on what I learned in this research and my personal risk tolerance. If you're wondering where to invest, I can personally recommend M1 Finance. It's so simple to use and you can set your desired allocation for each part of your portfolio. The app automatically invests your money and reinvests your dividends to maintain your desired asset allocation. Of course, there's also no commissions or fees, which I believe is one of the most important features of any investing account. So I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested. I'm also going to leave a link below to PortfolioCharts.com, which is a really cool resource for looking at different allocation strategies and their historical performance. So definitely check that out. I'd love to hear your thoughts on asset allocation, so leave me a comment and let me know how you're doing it. And before you go, please subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow our wealth together. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.